Hey, everybody, and uh, welcome back. And today, and it's been a while since I've talked to the amazing Kate um, Deering. We just have been chatting for about an hour and 10 minutes because <laughs> we haven't seen each other for, oh, it's been like two months. months. Yeah. yeah. But Lots just, happened we, in the world. Yeah, I know. So we've just been yabbering on and yabbering on and talking about her new child that she's adopted. <laughs> I'm sure Sweet if you've baby. been, is she, oh, she's down. She's so cute. Yeah. And I knew, I had a feeling you were going to keep her. Yeah. I mean, I'm, how would I not? And she was, you know, a furry baby. And I kept saying, no, no. And then it was like, yes, yes. That video that you posted with the, with the treat. Oh God. Like, she oh, does that it every night. Like, every that's night. Her, what is she like every scared night. of it? No, I think it's a game she plays. Uh-huh. I, I feel like cause I throw and she gets so excited. She'll be like, and then I'll throw it. And I throw it too. Right. Because everybody wants their food thrown to them. And she just comes in, gets it, gets it back, gets it back, gets it back. I mean, it's like, mm. and I, I laugh every single time. It's like free entertainment. That's so funny. Yeah, she's so gorgeous. Yeah, she's so cute. Winston's just been Winston, you know, lying in the bed, just having the best life ever. But he's just got the best life, that dog. Yeah. Sometimes I think, oh, baby. if we have a kid, like, I just love Winston so much. Imagine how much you'd love a kid. If you... <laughs> I don't know. They cry. Can- I have a, I have a, uh, a magnet on my refrigerator. It says like kids are, are like dogs, but they don't love you as much. And <laughs> they cost I more. I forget what it is. And I just like, that's correct. That's so funny. Well, today we want to talk about sugar and just do a bit of a deep dive into sugar. Cause you know, I know for those of you who've been following us for a while, you'll know sugar, about sugar and you'll know that sugar's okay, but we often get lots of new followers and sometimes you just need a bit of a refresher as well. You know, if you've been scrolling through social media or following other fitness models that are telling you to cut out sugar, you know, you might just need a, a bit of a reminder about, <laughs> about why sugar is okay and why it's um, not poison. Um, and I was actually just eating a nice piece of delicious caramel fudge um, with my coffee with milk. So... Just want to think about where we should start because I feel like like let, let's when do you think everyone started to turn against sugar because you know like the, like they're, they're, they're these, there's these trends in mainstream nutrition where you know like at one point it was saturated fat and then I think maybe after that then they moved on to sugar and and saying that like it's always like one thing is causing everything. Um, well, I think, <clears throat> I think Dr. Lustig was, uh, mm-hmm. Robert Lustig was probably a big instigator of the entire, uh, the, 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 the bittersweet, uh, the bitter truth. Uh, you know, he started the entire, uh, fructose is killing you and is making everyone obese. And that's, mm-hmm. that was the main thing, you know, sugar is killing everyone, it's giving you obesity. It elevates your cholesterol. And again, we have to always give context to what we're talking about. Right. And so first, when anytime Kitty and I are referencing sugars, we're always 99.9% referencing foods that have sugar and also nutrition, right? Mm-hmm. And those are normally like fruits, juices, roots, milk, right? Honey, like those are usually the primary foods that we are referencing. And we know that, that these are the foods that should be a good part of your diet because they provide the most usable source of energy for your cells, right? Your, your, your body runs on glucose. I don't, you know, however you, you, yes, can you force it to run on other things? 100%. Your body is so amazing that way that it can actually utilize other resources if you deprive it of sugar or glucose, right? Because also, we also know that when you consume something like sugar, there's a disaccharide. Don't don't you think, can I just cut in there, Kate, you just made a point. It's like how funny how people go, oh, but it's not an essential macronutrient because your body can make it from other things. But to me, that means it is an essential, it is essential because it has to make it from other things to get it to, to, to use, you know, like it, it's. Uh, it, so I, I will, I will kind of walk it back. So, I mean, that's mm. a good point, but it, it, it is, I mean, you can survive without no can, it, ingesting any carbohydrates. That's 100% true. And so I think that's where people get that premise. Like I don't mm. need it because I can make it, but mm. Yes, you're, but it is so important that yes, your body will make it so that you can use it. So your body can't make protein. Like you have to have protein in your diet. It's the one macronutrient that I would say that is actually essential because you cannot make your own. Um, and so carbohydrates can actually break down, right? We can break down protein and make carbohydrates. So in a sense, you know, it isn't essential that way. However, 
what we know is that when we don't ingest it and we try to make our own with our own body parts or ingesting protein sources or in the ketogenic is a whole nother story because mm. then you're making ketones but essentially there's an adaptation process an adaptation that occurs in our body that essentially our, our brain knows I, i'm not getting your most vital resource to, to provide energy so everything else kind of slows down a bit metabolism slows down and it's response to low sugar low carbohydrates right so we know that that is the actual response what happens the body can still survive which is again amazing because your body's so amazing but it, it in long term it will not thrive with that um with using other resources as your primary fuel can it go a good long time yeah it can it can go years decades in fact while trying to eat very low carbohydrate or minimizing it but again negative things are going to start occurring that you will not like and maybe you won't you know attribute it to having no sugar but again you know essentially you'll start having low hormone function which you know this is what we basically see your hair is going to start falling off eventually low hormone function your sleep's going to go to complete shit and your digestion will start to be interfered at some point in time but and then diseases just can set in because it's a very stressed place to basically run on lack of sugars or low sugars for long periods of time so we create that essential stress response even if it's at a low grade and it creates a body that just eventually will not work optimally i think yeah it's like and that's something that i used to think as well but like why would you just want to survive like yes you can survive but wouldn't you want to thrive you know it's it's so interesting and i think anyone who and like when I used to cut the sugar out of my diet, I would, and I would argue with people and, you know, I was so anti-sugar and it was, you know, if anyone said that I should eat sugar, I got really offended, but then I'd be smashing biscuits and cakes and everything with sugar in it on the weekend. But then, you know, coming back to my low carb, no sugar diet, um, you know, yeah, I just, I think, yeah. Well, I think that's a good point. Right. And I mean, and that's what essentially happens because your body is always, speaking to you right and i'm sure you get this all the time you're like i crave sugar and i'm like okay well that means you, you your body needs fuel period right mm -hmm. it's it's not it doesn't mean you you should be going and eating a whole cake which when you deprive yourself of sugar that's what eventually mm -hmm. happens right you get to the tipping point you can't do it anymore what what happens you get stressed right that's always the trigger you it's like on week two <laughs> week one week two you've been like grinding at the you know like holding on for dear life like i feel so good on no sugar <laughs> and then you <laughs> something very stressful happens that sets you over the edge. And at that point in time, your body's like, I need fuel. I'm going to freaking mm. die. And that's when you eat the chocolate cake, the tub of ice cream. And, you know, and I've seen it. We like, we've all done that at some point in time. We totally consume everything. And because our body is so not used to getting sugar, mm. we create this massive sugar, blood sugar uh, spike you know, and insulin spikes and it crashes. And then, so then you need more sugar and it just creates this horrible uh, event that happens that you overconsume, feel like garbage, right? And then your digestion is horrible. And so you get, you know, you become constipated, depressed, you can't sleep that night. And so, and then you like vow to yourself, I will never do that again. And then two weeks later, you do the exact same thing again, right? Mm -hmm. Because the system, right? Sugar is the most anti-stress food you can possibly consume, mm -hmm. right? And people, I mean, and I'm like, what? Right? It is when your body is stressed, right? The, the two hormones that are going to elevate, adrenaline and cortisol, those are going to go up and that's going to create the body either trying to break itself down or utilize other resources to provide your body with the needed sugar that it wants mm -hmm. if you don't give it. But if you give yourself sugar, then those hormones will eventually drop because you're giving it the actual resource that it wants. Now, you know, how you deliver it to your system or what you, you know, or when or so forth will play a role in how your body feels. But normally, like as soon as you hit that stress response, and I tell people, especially when they get started, I go, look, initially you might still binge in the beginning, one or, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. But before you binge, go in there, drink a, a glass of orange juice. Mm. allow yourself a second and then if you still feel like doing it then go do it but usually mm. if we can get their blood sugar balanced and those hormones dropped a little bit then they're like oh okay i don't feel like i want to eat everything and they feel <laughs> a little bit better 
and then they're able to kind of make better choices because you know as soon as you get to that point where you want to binge you will not out willpower that out right you don't mm -hmm. win at that point it's like Never. that your brain at that point is like survival 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 i want cake i don't want a piece of celery or a carrot or anything at that point it's like cake cookies ice cream whatever Mm, I think too, like something, and this, this was a bit of a light bulb moment for me a long time ago is, you know, like people will say, oh yeah, but I, I cut the sugar out of my diet and, you know, now I'm feeling so much better or my, a lot of my health issues are improving, but look at what you're eating before, you know, like a lot of people will be eating sugar in, like you say, processed cakes, biscuits, um, cereals you know, takeaway foods. Um, and yes, it has white sugar, but it also has vegetable oils and, you know, thickeners and gums and preservatives and all the other crap and flour and starches. Um, and of course, you're going to feel better initially because you're removing all of the crap from your diet. Um, you know, it's not as though, like I've never had anyone say to me, oh, Kitty, I was eating a diet full of sugar, but I was eating fruit and juice and milk and all the things we eat. 100%. And then I removed the sugar and I felt, felt better. So I think you've got to like just instead of getting so angry about it, <laughs> just think a bit more critically about, about it and the food that you're actually eating the sugar with, I think is just so, so, so important. And, you know, like no one ever, when you ask them says, oh, I've just been eating 10 cups of plain white sugar. No, you know, it's, it's not, that. no, like it's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, and what you'll find is when you, um, remove those vegetable oils from your diet and so much of the grains, I think, and the flowers and you start to eat fruits and juices and all the, you know, you can eat some fudge and ice cream and you actually just start to feel so much better and more energized. Um, and in the long run too, you'll feel better. Cause I think a lot of these people, they feel better initially, but then as like you say, time goes on, it's like, you know, like the death by a thousand cuts, you know, it just slowly over time, your body just, breaks down you know and it may not seem like you, you may initially feel better but then things will just get worse like i've never met anyone who's done a keto diet for a long period of time that says to me that they feel awesome yeah well i mean i mean first i just want to comment on a couple things right i think yeah delivery system of sugar is very important mm. right how that how it's delivered to you cookies cakes processed foods no that's not ideal because of the other components in the food um Sugars with nutrition, highly nutrition, usable sugars, fruits, juices, milk, dairy, those, yeah, good. But yes, there's no one ever that's come to me that's been like, I'm eating all these foods and I feel crappy. It's because mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're eating all the processed garbage, right? And mm -hmm. so that's a, a, a very important part. And, you know, and then when you get into the people that are like, I removed everything sweet or sugary, including mm -hmm. fruit, and then I'm just eating vegetables and protein and some fat. And there's a lot of reasons they could feel good, right? I mean, one being, you know, depending on the health, the, their gut health, right? If your gut health is complete crap and you're eating maybe a lot of raw fruits or even raw anything at that point, they're going to be irritants to the gut area, right? And so when you remove a lot of these foods, it could possibly be creating some irritation of the gut, which might be irritable bowel syndrome. You might get some SIBO. You might have some candida or whatever else and you remove those things, right? And basically removing most of the carbohydrates, the gut's getting a rest. So the gut will, that will make you feel better. And I think that's why a lot of people feel better on like a keto diet because they're mm -hmm. removing a lot of the foods that might be irritating. They're really screwed up gut, right? Because if that all makes you feel good, then your gut was really effed up. And so, you know, if all, if you add fruit back in and stuff like that, and now your gut's still messed up, right? Then you didn't really fix anything. You just basically remove the very thing that might have been irritating at the time. And so it's not to say, <clears throat> it's not to say that you shouldn't have these foods. It's just basically saying, <clears throat> milk. <laughs> I get excited. We are it's talking about sugar. Right. Well, it's just saying that maybe, maybe what your diet was doing prior really messed up your gut. And I don't know about you, but I don't work with anybody that doesn't have some gut issues. They all have something going on, right? Mm -hmm. Some to the degree that they basically can't even eat anything anymore because their gut is so messed up and mm -hmm. so backed up mm -hmm. and all of these things are occurring that they can barely eat any foods at this point in time. 
and their body can't get any energy due to that. So if they're not eating very easily digestible sugars to get them energy, then they can't get anything in their system, right? And so, and then that's where, you know, we talk about when you're gonna have sugars in there, make sure that they're easily digestible and processed to you, which is usually the sweet fruits, tropical, papayas, mangoes, um, papas, lychees, all of those are very helpful, plus a lot of cooked fruits that I like to do. And then mm. of course, you know, orange juice is king and other juices can work too because it, your digestive system does not have to work really, really hard to try and get what it needs out of that food. It's mm -hmm. there, it's available, you know, it it's, has access to it without having it bound in a bunch of fibers that it can't get access to because when your body is in that survival mode, you want all the energy to be used to try to fix you, not try to break down all the foods that you're giving it and finding really hard to, you know, to, to process. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so mm -hmm. all of those things need to take into consideration when you decide if sugars and fruits are good for you, right? Mm -hmm. Every person, as you know, is a little bit different. If you are coming off a keto or low carb diet, consuming a bunch of sugars right off the bat, probably not a good idea. You're probably going to feel slow. pretty happy. <laughs> Yeah, I think and, you get excited that you can eat that this food again. I think a lot of women do it, you know, and I did it too. You just go hell for totally. leather because you're like, fuck yeah. You know, yeah. Like, I just, I want to eat all this, this and you get excited and, you know, a lot of women do stack on weight and, you know, I've been a lot heavier than I am now and a lot holding a lot more body fat, but um, yeah, because it, I mean, it tastes nice too. And your body, cra you cra crave sugar because it's your body telling you that you need it. And that, that really was another light bulb moment for me. I remember when I was very first working with Emma and she said, well, maybe kitty, your body's trying to tell you something, you know, like it, it would it really crave sugar if it was going to poison you. Like that just doesn't, it, it just doesn't make sense. You know, it's just, people say that white sugar is poison. It's like, well, like, I think it's interesting too how people say, oh, white sugar is poison, kitty, but the sugar in fruit and juice is not poison. You know, it's like, well, it's exactly the same. It all breaks down to the same thing. Obviously, this, the fruit and the juice has vitamins, minerals and fiber and some extra free molecules of glucose and fructose, but it's all the same, like sucrose. It's just like we talked about, it has nutrients in it. You know, it's yeah, and, and I think that's where, and I'm like I said, and I think that's a good point because when you, I mean, the only difference with white sugar is it's pure energy. Mm -hmm. And if you're consuming a lot of energy, and what we know about glucose and fructose is both of them are actually metabolic stimulants, they improve and increase metabolic rate, which is what we want to do, and that mm -hmm. is why they are recommended. But giving yourself a bunch of white sugar without enough nutrition, eventually you're going to start having some sort of nutritional defense, deficiencies. Because part of the responsibility of eating a metabolic diet and having it supported by health of sugars is there is a responsibility now to eat enough nutrition because your demands and the needs for nutrition as your body uses more energy are going to increase. And that's what you'll see, right? And that's where they're like, oh, sugar depletes minerals and vitamins. If we give them just sugar that, you know, mm -hmm. and on some level it's correct, but taken out of context because- mm -hmm. If you give someone a bunch of sugar without any nutrition, guess what? It is because that sugar is doing metabolic processes. And if you don't give it nutrition, it's going to pull nutrition to complete its metabolic processes. And that's why sugar with nutrients is ideal. You need both to support the higher metabolic rate. You can't do one without the other long term because it just doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that sugar is bad. It just means, and I, and I gave this example the other day, is your car needs both gas and oil to run optimally, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't give you, put oil in your car and you keep putting gas in there and then the engine breaks, it doesn't mean that the gas is bad. Mm -hmm. It just means that you burn through the oil and you needed to give it more oil. You need both. And one is going to make the other one use more, right? You, so as you start using more gas, you're going to use more oil. Mm. you start using more fuel you're going to need more nutrients right and so eat, those eat your liver eat people. your oysters <laughs> everyone yeah drink your dairy eat your fruit drink your, drink your juice you know and, and, yeah and that's part of the reason why those foods liver and oysters are recommended because they don't actually even have barely well nope barely any carbohydrates or very zero almost and so but they're super packed with nutrition because again, as metabolism increases, they're a vital way to get usable nutrition into your diet. 
right? To, to keep it supported because you're going to use, especially B vitamins, you're going to use a ton of those as you increase metabolism. Mm. And, you know, and if you try to increase metabolic rate and, and not eat a lot of these foods, you will start to have issues. You'll start to have skin issues. You'll start to have hair issues. And I can see mm. it in people, you know, when they've, they've done a lot of this by themselves and they feel better, but then they're like, but I'm starting to get a rash or I'm starting to have this skin, my skin's dry or whatever. And it's because they're not supporting it with enough of the vital nutrients that they're now using more. Right. Mm. And that's why, you know, people sometimes get better when they mm. add something like a polyunsaturated fat, omega-3, omega-6, or whatever fish oil into their diet, because doing that actually lowers metabolism, which means your meat, your needs for minerals and vitamins are lowered. So if you were having a deficiency of vitamin A or zinc or something, and now they're lower, that issue goes away. Does it mm -hmm. mean that that thing was good for you? No, you just lowered your need for nutrients, and that's why it worked. And that's mm -hmm. why, you know, and we can go on a whole other thing about why medications work and why most of the things that doctors prescribe you <laughs> work to remove your symptoms, but so many of them are anti-metabolic. And they just suppress your body's need for certain nutrients. And so your symptom goes away. But, oh, gosh, when I take this, I'm now gaining weight. Okay. Or now my immune system. Or now that I've been doing this, I get sick often. Or, you mm. know, okay. So something isn't right then, right? All of those things are going to happen when your metabolism is more suppressed. Yeah, I think, you know, from his, because I've been doing this for a while now, and that's just one of the things, even though I hated it, like I just used to choke the liver down, like every week, I just, I try so many different ways to like make it nice. And I just always sit there and think, this is just such a waste of a meal. You know, like you're eating, you're like, you, I'm knowing, I'm eating because I know it's good. Yeah. But God, thank God we finally made the liver tablets, you know? So it's like, you just get, I mean, if you can, the ideal thing would be kill the cow and take the liver straight from the cow. You know, that would be the ultimate best way to do it but obviously very few people can do that and if you can get fresh liver great and if you just can't deal with the taste if you just don't like it you don't want to cut it up take the liver tablets like God, we've been getting rave reviews from people um who haven't you know because for so long they're just like i can't do a liver kitty i just can't do the liver i can't do the liver and you know they start taking the liver tablets and it's incredible a lot of the changes improvements that they notice um people are honest about bloody doing oyster powder dried freeze dried oyster powders we've ordered some from new zealand actually to, to, to test it um so it will be interesting to see how that goes but yeah just do yourself a favor and if it's even if it's just i mean do everything but like eat the liver and eat the oysters like it's not <laughs> i know that they're not that nice like i don't love really love oysters either actually like i don't I like, I like them more than I like liver, but I don't sit there and think, oh, these are just so bloody delicious. Like, you know, when I drink my juice, do you like oysters? I do, as long as they're not too big. I, I mean, I have to put all the gear on them, right? Like I like them this big and I have to put lemon, I need a horseradish and I need to put some of the, the red sauce on there. And sometimes, I, you know, I mean, yeah, if yeah. I put enough stuff on there, yeah. then I'm good. I mean, really and if they're too big then I don't like them. Um, but I actually, I enjoy it. You know, mm. I mean, it's part of the process, you know, ever since the quarantine has gone on, mm. I have, I, I won't eat raw food. Um, you know, I think I told you I had food poisoning a couple. Oh right yeah. Now. You felt like you're going to so die. I was like, I'm not doing raw food till yeah. the restaurants are normal. So <clears throat> I'll do the canned can to me or, eh, I mean, they're not as good, but I get them down. Yeah, you know. the, I don't mind the old smoked ones, you know, when they're cold, bit of lemon juice, bit of pepper, you know, yep. have fruit, like I'll do that with the chili. I like the ones with the chili, but look, just get them in, even if you, and that's probably, you know, like we talk about things being, try and make them as delicious as you can, but you know, like there's just some things you've just got to eat, even though they're not delicious. Like I would just eat them. Yeah. And I, and I'll sometimes do an agreement with my clients that I was like, if you can do half liver tablets, right. Cause you have yeah. your product. Um, and then half, cause I really want them, but it's like, if that, what if we make a deal yeah. uh, that will work a little bit better, you know? And, and then I also find as people kind of get healthier, you know, it, it, it's not, they kind of become more open to trying other things in the beginning, just like they're, if they don't have a diet, I mean, an appetite or they're just like, uh, your liver's you know, not going to be, you're not going to be like, I oh, go, give me look, that there's so <laughs> many other things that we can work on first and then mm. if we get to a place that i'm like oh, i really need to add this in 
then they're a little bit more open because they've already done so many other steps and now that's part of their norm and they feel a little bit better. And so mm. I'm like, okay, let's, can we, how about this now? Can we do it now? Mm. About now, you know? So I get it, you know? And I think like, yeah, if you're like, oh, I can't do that diet. I, Cause I've had people like write on my book and they're like, I can't, oh, you want me to do liver. So I'm not going to even like do And I'm like, wait, what? There's like, <laughs> There's like 99 other things you can do to help I know. You yourself. People so say, ask don't, me Don't get too. stuck on that. Don't get stuck on these things, right? So, you know. You just got to get like resourceful, it. people. You just got to get bloody resourceful. It's like, you just got to say to yourself, what, it, what is it that I want? I want to be healthy. You know, I want to feel good. It's like, just find a way. Just find a way. Like, well, you can do it. You can even, like the tablets, the liver tablets, you can't even taste them. You just swallow them down. You know what I mean? It's like, you can, look, I just there's a will, there's a way you've just got to sometimes, you know, but I say that to people too. I'm like, look, just start with this and then let's work towards eating the liver, but eventually you've got to eat it if you want to be optimized, you know? Yeah, it's true. I mean, but like, and I agree, and I, but I would say the first thing is first is you got to eat, you got to, you got to have carbohydrates, <laughs> have you got to have sugars, you got to have sugars <laughs> with nutrients. Like that is got like, just work on that. Right. Because, mm-hmm. you know, that the, the other part I, I get all the time from people like, oh, hey, Kate, you know, I, I know I'm going to have this event and it's going to be super stressful. What do I do? I'm like, you, you just got to eat. I go, you got to be fueled. I yeah. go, there's no, or I have, oh, you know, this is, how do I offset like this stressful event that's going to happen? Or, you know, or I got to work next week and I'm going to have a bunch of meetings. What do I do? I'm like, okay. Anytime you have stuff going on in your life and you just need more fuel, mm. period. If you're doing more, you need more fuel. What is your best fuel? Sugars with nutrients, mm. right? So if you do more, consume more, just get the best choices, period. Mm. It's like, and if you do that, then you will offset the stress reaction, which most people are living in. 24 seven, especially in today's environment. Right. And mm. I'm sure like we talked about this, everybody is so angry. It's like, and they're so like attacking everybody all on social media. I mean, it's insane. And it's like, mm. all right, everybody calm down. And I know you've been pent up and you know, all this has been going on, but it's like, if you don't consume enough healthy sugars that pushes you into that sympathetic stress state, and then you like quarantine someone and you're not getting any sun and you're not eating any, you know, you're going to be a highly reactive kind of anxious, anxiety driven human being at this point. Right. And mm-hmm. so it's like, everybody needs to take a chill pill, start consuming a lot more healthy sugars, get them back in your diet. And I assure you, you're going to feel a lot better. You're going to be able to think better. You're not going to be so attacking everybody. Right. Because I, I mean, it's like, I don't understand how anybody thinks that helps anything ever. It doesn't. Mm. I think, right? this, yeah, you're right. They just need to eat more sugar. Actually, just quick, quickly before we go, because I know we, we're nearly out of time, but let's just quickly talk about diabetes because that's one, and I think people don't understand really what diabetes is and they just think that sugar causes diabetes. Okay. Um, so obviously we know when you are a diabetic, you get high blood sugar mm. and the chronically high blood sugar can lead into insulin resistance, which will create the diabetic state, right? Which you're not basically able to utilize sugars anymore. So obviously you, the thought is it's the high blood sugar, it's the increase of sugar that's creating you know, the insulin resistance, which is creating the diabetic state, which on the outside is true. However, when you see what is happening, right? So diabetes is usually happens with high blood sugar, but also it's also high fat in the blood and and the fat usually gets in there because most people they're going their their system is stressed and in you don't eat enough right when you don't eat enough then your body will again cortisol adrenaline as we talked before it will liberate right when you're not consuming enough food uh it breaks down tissue to raise blood sugar the other thing it does though it liberates fat from your tissue to also utilize as energy right when we do this on a chronic level right? Having constant fat and sugar into our blood system, especially from our bodies. And then maybe we consume sugar. Well, what happens is the fat will essentially inhibit the sugar to get into the cell, Mm. right? Which creates even higher blood sugar, right? Which creates the signaling high blood sugar, insulin, insulin raises, nothing happens. Blood Mm. sugar rises even higher. 
great, right? The response, more insulin, right? And they keep happening because the sugar can't get in because of the high fat that's in the blood that's inhibiting the sugar from getting into the cell. Now, you know, you can do any test. If you are diabetic, yes, you will have high blood sugar, but if they actually look at your blood and measure the amount of fat in there too, I assure you, it is also very high. Now, this response creates the cells from, again, not being able to allow sugar into the cell. And so the normal response is, well, just eliminate all the sugar. And does that solve things? It does, mm. but now you essentially become a fat burner. And now you're using, and that's why a lot of diabetics like to go keto or super low carb and they feel better. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and so they basically just start running on fat. And again, that can work. And that might actually get rid of a lot of your symptoms created from that high blood sugar response. However, as we talked about before, over time, that response is going to start to create more adaptations because again, we run best on sugars. Mm -hmm. And so if you continue to do that, then you're going to, what, what we'll find is you're going to be even more sugar sensitive right? And I actually talked to someone about a year or so ago, <clears throat> and she had lost all this weight. She was diabetic, mm -hmm. um, and she was eating no carbs, mm -hmm. um, some fat and protein. And if she even ate a teaspoon of like honey or any sugar, her blood sugar went so high because she couldn't get it out of her system. And mm -hmm. she was in a super, 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 super tight spot. Like, right, what do you do? And it was a basic, complete, small, small I mean, you have to find where that person can tolerate and go very small at one time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you slowly but surely make the shift in adaptation. And, it is, and it's tough when you become in the diabetic state. You know, mm -hmm. it is tough. I mean, and, but you can, um, it's, what's the doctor? I can't, I can't even think of him right now. Is it? No. Um, anyways, uh, he, right. The, uh, I got I'll have to get back to you on the name, mm -hmm. but all he did to, and he did this and he cured diabetes and he cured people with kidney issues and he cured people with hypertension. Um, he basically gave them a 99% carbohydrate diet and they call it the rice diet it was all rice. I think white table sugar and some nutrients, some fruit. Mm -hmm. And that's all he gave them. That's all they were allowed. And it essentially cured their diabetes, cured their hypertension, cured their, their kidney issues and giving them 100% carbohydrate to somebody that supposedly couldn't take it. Because mm -hmm. when you force the system to do only that, it starts to learn to be able to utilize it. The other part is you have to get, the, you got to get out of the stress, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not, if you continually stay in stress and your body doesn't have any carbohydrates to utilize, it's going to liberate fat, but it's also going to break down your muscle tissue, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to give you enough muscle breakdown to regulate that blood sugar, right? But it's also going to liberate a lot of the fat from your system, right? That's why a lot of people who go low carb, they lose a lot of weight, but tons of fats flooding their system, right? And again, the chronic state is what's going to create that cell and able to utilize the sugar properly. So it's not the sugar that's mm. creating the problem. It's your system that's under stress that has started to liberate these fats and had them compete over time that starts to create the insulin resistance that creates the sugar's inability to get into the cell. I can't and remember who told me this really simple explanation, but it really helped me understand it was that insulin's like the key that on unlocks the door to the cell to let the sugar in, the glucose in. But when the, your, your blood's full of free fatty acids and fat, it actually blocks the key. Like, so it can't unlock the door. And I was like, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. And, you know, look, we've had a lot of women come into our program with type 2 diabetes and, you know, we get them to log their food. And if you look at what they're eating, yes, they're eating sugar, but they're eating a lot of takeaway foods. So they're eating a lot of polyunsaturated fats and vegetable oils with the sugar. So really it's, you know, like you say, it's just the, it's the fat that's stopping your cells from being able to actually utilize that sugar. And when they start to remove that and slowly start to change their diet, I mean, we've even got, um, we've got a lady who's been in our program, oh God, over 12 months now. She's a type one diabetic um, since she's the age of four. And she, I did an interview with her and she was just saying to me how the last time she went to a doctor, her doctor was like, did, you know, they get the regular blood test done. And her doctor was like, wow, like your blood tests are the best that they've ever been. And you, you're using less insulin. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and, and it, I think it blows people's minds. 
Totally. And, and yeah. what we also know is that insulin isn't the only thing that helps assist sugars in, right? We also know that potassium is also mm. helpful to shuttle sugars into the cell, right? So that's why high potassium diets are ideal for a diabetic because mm. potassium has a kind of insulinic response where it can help mm. shuttle sugars into the cell. That's why also fructose is actually quite beneficial because it doesn't create an insulin, it's, it's, it doesn't create insulinic response, right? We don't need insulin to get sugar to be utilized or fructose to be utilized, right? And so those things are because I think, again, misunderstood, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, oh, I'm gonna get fatty liver disease. I'm like, well, the other part of that is we also know a low choline diet, right? Which a lot of these people are probably also high cholesterol because most of them, I mean, if you're usually diabetic, you're usually gonna be hypothyroid. So mm -hmm. they probably have high cholesterol. So their doctors are telling them don't eat any cholesterol. So they eliminate all eggs or liver or anything that has cholesterol, but also B vitamins or choline. And mm. so, yeah, then you eat some fructose and yeah, you have a good chance of kind of getting fatty liver disease. But it's again, it's because you're missing, right? What did we talk about before? Mm. High metabolism, increased fruit, increased sugars. You're going to need more nutrients. And then if you mm. eliminate foods that are going to be vital in those nutrients, egg yolks, liver, milk, then you're going to be depleted and you're going to start having symptoms somewhere else, right? So there's not just one piece, like all of it kind of works synergistically together. And that's why people, like we don't recommend liver because it's so amazingly and it tastes good. Um, it can, and I am amazed that people actually love it because some do, but either it is so beneficial on so many levels to give you and like it's just once a week once 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 right you, i know it's only 100 grams for, yeah you've been you've been feeling shitty for five years like you're dealing with migraine headaches and slack of sleep i go just try and mix them you know do it and just tell your body it's good right and get it down it's mm. like 10 minutes you can do it you can do it you can totally do it or yeah, yeah. or just take the liver tablets you know <laughs> just get it in whatever way you can but yeah, I think that's just was so good to talk about the diabetes and the sugar because I think so, and I used to think the same um, thing. But when, like you say, you dig a bit deeper and you understand what actually causes it, you're like, oh. And then again, if you look at people's diets and what they've been doing historically, what they've been doing, it makes so much more, um, so much more sense. And yeah, I mean, yeah. like I think when you go to there is if you are a diabetic there, and you probably look back on your life and when you were told you had diabetes you were probably doing some stressed out shit. And, and that can be as simple as you were low, low carb for long because low carb people can get diabetes solely mm -hmm. because they're in a stressed state and their body's still producing sugars, right? And that can create it. So I've seen that happen too. Mm -hmm. and, but usually it's like they've been stressed out. They weren't eating regularly. They were eating out all the time. They're eating processed food. They're eating high mm -hmm. polyunsaturated foods. They're mm -hmm. eating a bunch of garbage. And all of a sudden they're like had diabetes and they were told give up sugar. Mm -hmm. and, Usually maybe at that point too, they just decided to eat better, right? Maybe they went mm -hmm. vegan at that point, right? But it was mm -hmm. probably better than the garbage they were eating before, so they felt better. So whatever it was, and like you said before, you know, the diet you came from, other diets might make you feel better because maybe your diet sucked so bad before. So yeah. going <laughs> vegan. Loads you know? of booze. You know? Right, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you will feel better, right? Mm. But again, in time, if you start having other symptoms, then you know that you're missing something and you, know. you probably did this too like i used to remember i'd on the weekends like if i'd you, i'd go get shit faced and then the next day i'd just eat dog shit you know like oh, ben and jerry's i used to love that ben and jerry's cookie dough ice cream pizzas corn chips and i'd feel so terrible but so then the next morning i'd be like oh that's it cleaning up the diet you know i'd be cut out all the sugar again get back on the green and of course i felt better because I was hung over and <laughs> I just smashed, you know, like just a whole heap of dog shit food. So yes, you're going to feel better, but then obviously eventually you just, you just feel shit again. <laughs> it's like this terrible cycle cycle. You give up. Yeah. If you're fast food, that's what I, I mean. I, my, you know, I could tell you exactly what my uh, post party meal was. What was it? It was McDonald's what, what? Yeah. And, um, chicken sandwich, <laughs> large fries and a McFlurry with. Oh, I love, you should love those McFlurries. The mm -hmm. crunchy ones. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that, I mean, that was like the meal. Like I would wake up at whatever noon and that would be like, oh, I feel, and then that's why I go eat. It was a bunch of grease. It probably kind of made me feel a little bit better. And then I would sleep. And the next day was back on healthy eating. Back on. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I feel so much better. I'm not yeah. ever going to do that again. Yeah, yeah. Where are we going? Um, 
then Friday rolls around and you know, like it takes you like, like till you finally feel like the, 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 all this shit's out of your sieve. You're like, let's go again. I'm ready. I feel good. You know? Yeah. I was quite accomplished for a long period of time. Right. So I'm always amazed. I mean, that's why I say to people, if I can get out of what I did to myself and I really did a lot to myself and feel Same. better, not, you know, and, and recover from that and not just remove symptoms, but literally recover, then most people, wherever they're at, can get better. It doesn't matter if you're 30, 40, 50, 60. I mean, I have worked with well into their 60 year old women that are having all sort of still postmenopausal issues mm. that just need to be regulated. And, mm. you know, you it's can never too get late. better. Yes. Mm. Don't ever think it's too late. Doesn't matter if, I mean, you'll just hopefully extend your life too. So you'll be having living longer. So, you know, and why not live the rest of your life eating sugar and deliciousness and, you know, cause just these foods taste nice too. Like how good is juice? I just love juice. Hey, like, just, we've got like, like I think six or seven, two liter bottles in our fridge at all times, you know, just, it, it, I mean, <laughs> and here's the thing. Once you start and you know, the, the most amazing part about when you finally give your body the, the usable sugars that it wants, you won't crave all the other garbage. You won't binge. You're not ever going to, you can have cookies, you can have cake you can have all those things in your house and you're mm. not ever going to eat it all. Because when you're in that kind of deprived binging state, you can't have anything bad in your house. We all know we've done, I can't have any of that stuff in my house, so I'll binge on it, which mm. is really true. But when you become more regulated and you're getting enough of the sugars that your body wants through the day, mm. you won't do that anymore. And you don't have to will it. You don't have to try. It's just, you don't have to do it. And I mean, that to me, that was the biggest gift because you don't have to think anymore. I'm like, I just know when I need fuel. I know I need to have some. I know when I'm busy and I'm stressed, I need more. And mm. it's always more. The answer is always more, right? I have all these <laughs> things before. It's more. You need more. Okay, I did all this I, and I was going busy and I'm like, and I got, you needed more, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you have more, I promise that's what it is. It's, it's still finding what's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. But when you counteract those calories, the healthy sugars with your stress loads and your symptom, it will eventually regulate you. Mm -hmm. I think you, I, I feel like that too. Like just the freedom from constantly thinking about food and, you know, like same, I'll have fudge in my fridge every week, like big tubs of it. Cause I make big lots of it. And it just, I have like two pieces every day and that's fine. Like I never feel like I need to go down and eat the whole tub. Cause you're just not restricting anymore. Yep. Like I said, and I mean, I have women email me daily. Mm. Thank you so much for writing that book. I never thought I was going to be able to eat these foods again. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm eating these foods and I just feel so much better. It, I feel so much better. And, I mean, a lot of them might say, I'm like, I still want to lose weight. Okay, right? This is not a quick weight loss plan, but it mm. is a regulating, get healthy, and yes, set yourself up so that you can do it healthfully. Mm. But I mean, I, I, I feel for most women because I think most of them are walking them around feeling pretty shitty. Mm. Even if you look amazing, you probably feel a little bit yeah if you're in your 20s maybe not so much but as essentially so many are walking around in some sort of deprived state and you really don't have to you know if, mm -hmm. is if you nourish yourself optimally with the things that your body is constantly telling you that it wants and you learn to regulate that you can be more balanced and have those foods and be fine mm -hmm. and feel better mm -hmm. and you just it life is just better it's just better with more food in it. You'll just feel happier, you know, and you won't want to write nasty things on posts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just Everybody like, in today's world definitely <laughs> needs to feel a little bit more regulated. Right? <laughs> they all, you know, I mean, everyone says oh, I'm in, in my house eating, you know, I'm in my refrigerator every 10 minutes. But I'm like, yeah, but what are you eating? You're just eating a bunch of crap. Like if you've been eating good food and sugars and fruits, then you're fine, right? Right. I mean, yeah. we're all been under quarantine, right? And if you've been regulated, it doesn't make a difference. You know, you're eating when your demands are high and then your body knows when their demands aren't as high, you're not as hungry. It's how yeah, your body yeah. should work. Right. Yeah. But if you're constantly going to the fridge and you're not doing anything every 20 minutes, then I don't know, maybe you're not eating the right foods. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh well, thanks. It's so awesome to catch up with you. We'll have to make sure we don't, make sure we don't leave it as long. Um, totally. Next time we've been on here for two hours now. We've gone way over time. I'm so sorry. No, okay. I always kind of leave it. I'm like, okay, I got to make sure I have time. Yeah, leave I know. Speed. You always have a good chat, have a catch and up. We always, yeah. yeah, it's like we a million f bombs get dropped. <laughs> we were really good actually in this episode. I don't think we swore very so. much at all. Yeah, yeah I think we did. Yeah, look at us all grown up. Oh, go us. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much, uh, Kate. And if you haven't read Kate's book, definitely grab it. It's awesome. We sell it. You can get it on Kindle. You can get it off Amazon. You can get it. And You've done you the voice. Yeah, yeah. You, you can get an listen. audio now. And I, yeah. I want to put out there that, yeah, audio works that uh, right now. I mean, if it's your first audio, then you can get a 30 day free trial. So oh, yeah. Who read it? Did you read it? I did not read it. I hired someone to read it. I, you know, I didn't know how to go through the process. So yeah. I did, I just hired, I hired someone I thought's voice I liked. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm like, I can't know. Nobody's going to listen to that. No, but I, I mean, I needed to sound like, you know, anyways, and she did a great job. I think she really oh, did awesome. a great job reading it. So it sounds, but yeah, so it's 30 days. You can free. If you, you can listen to it, if you don't like it, you just cancel, you know, whatever. But I think it's a great opportunity for people to get introduced to the work. And, you know, if you don't like it, then, yeah, cancel your And membership. look, if you read it and you don't like it, just, you don't, just, and you want to go and write a bad review on there, an angry review. I've read some of the reviews. I'm like, just think about eating some more sugar first. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, a lot of me, it can trigger, right? Sometimes people get triggered reading it. Um, but for most, I think most people, if you're open to something new, if you're, if you're just reading it to try and tell me I'm wrong, well, okay. Um, if you're reading it because nothing you're doing is working any longer and you're mm. like, why is everything so hard? You know, mm. is there a better way? Then mm. I say, then give it an opportunity. And I think, you know, most people, 99 that I of course talk to, um, are like, thank God, because I've been, <laughs> I've been going nuts and I don't want to go nuts anymore. Right. Life is hard already. Why deprive mm. yourself? I just can't even imagine. Like sometimes I think about like when it's stressful times and I think, oh God, imagine if I was still eating 1200 calories and not eating any sugar, I probably would have topped myself by now, I think. Yeah. You would, will you be on anti-anxieties, yeah. antidepressives, sleep medications? I mean, you know, this is what I, I, we hear, you know, mm. I feel for these women. They've already, they, they're so afraid to eat and when their system starts derailing, they, they go to their doctor and they're like, I don't know what's wrong with me. And they're like, well, you're having anxiety or you're going through menopause, or here's some medication, take this, take it. I mean, and these poor women, so they band-aid themselves, mm. right? I mean, mm. I, I, so we could do a whole post on the medical system. And again, I think there's a lot of great doctors, I don't wanna say everybody, but how they treat a lot of chronic issues is completely backward and mm. it's making people sicker. It, but it's hard too, it's much harder because you gotta dig deep and face a lot of shit and you know, like it's easy just to take a pill. Well, you, you have, and like, I think we talked about this is like learning something new. Like if you've been dieting for 20 years, mm. it's so ingrained, it becomes this unconscious way that you do. And that's why it's easy just to go from one shitty fucked up, that, oop, there we go. One <laughs> diet that's going to deprive you to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. It's what you're used to. And mm. this is a completely mind shift. And so for you to really submerge yourself into it, you really need to be cognitive and think about it and ask yourself questions and Hey, does this make sense to me? And then try mm. to apply it, right? And because it's not the immediate response, right? You usually do a new mm. diet and you might lose weight and that just doesn't usually happen here, mm. you know, because your body needs to self-correct. Your body needs fuel and your body is trying to make hormones and your body's trying to digest. And that we're trying to fix those things mm. that the normal response that people are used to doesn't happen. So you're fighting that mm. and that occurs. And that's why it's helpful to get on a program or have a coach so you can work through that, right? A lot of what we do when we coach people, it's not like really about eating the food. Like there's a book, there's information that tells you it's helping you work through what's going to happen when we completely shift how you're thinking about this. Because you're going to have questions. You're going to freak out sometimes. You're going to wonder, am I doing this right? Because it's not happening in the way that you are used to. And mm. that can be a little bit scary for a lot of people. Or, you know, so it, it is a definitely a mind shift. And you will need sugar to get through this because it's going to be very cognitive and it's going to require some brain power. And your brain loves sugar and it mm. needs it to thrive. So all of it together, you can... Uh, you know, you'll get through it. But ultimately when you get to the other side, life is way better. <laughs> totally. 
Yeah, and you'll get to eat just eat yum food. I just love food. It's probably about time for me to eat again, actually. But uh, th- <laughs> thanks so much, um, Kate. That was uh, awesome. My pleasure. And and I'll um I'll uh, I'll message you for next time, and we'll just have to put a bit more time aside so we can get more podcasting done and less chatting. Totally. We gotta uh, give it. I always give you thirty minutes, though. We gotta at least get the thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We got one out. That's good. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, bye. All right, my dear. Bye. See you later.